All right. Thank you all for watching this episode. We are connecting with Jason Drake to discuss the people first approach to ERP implementations. Uh, Jason, been meaning to get you on this webcast for a while. So thank you for taking time for this. Man, Brian, good to see you. And uh, I, I've been watching your series here for a while and I'm, I'm honored to be on here talking with you today. I'm excited, been looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. All right, so um, Jason, we also know that you're involved with ACMP Midwest. So, you know, you're famous, but everybody doesn't know you, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, thanks. I, you know, I, I think I, I love my story about how I found change management. I think it's different in a lot of ways from other people. I. Like you, I'm a, I'm a veteran of, of the military. Um, unlike you, I was an Air Force veteran. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> but, uh, but after that, I, I kind of roamed around trying to figure out where my passion and, and, and uh, interest lied. And I found myself in technology, and then I found myself in sales, um, and really kind of started to get a groove in sales and then moved into leadership. You know, and there's a connection there um, between sales and leadership. And it was really about the people, right? It was about aligning and identifying needs and filling those needs and putting people forward to succeed um, that I was really falling in love with and, and went back to school and finished my grad degree in org leadership. And, um, and then about the same time, I, I was leading a, a pretty good sized retail market and was invited to join as a change agent, a big technology implementation. So I was leading a couple states through that change process, right? Like while I was had my normal day job wearing wearing a hat that a, a retail leader's got to everything that goes with that. Um, and I was like, man, this is this is where it's at. Like that was the core of leadership that I really appreciated. And you know, leading people and being in sales that, you know, your products change, your customers change. It was always about how was I getting people to do new things differently or you know what have you. Yeah. Loved it. Um, and was fortunate enough to get invited up to uh, to our enterprise change management team. I didn't even realize anything such like that existed. And Man, it has just been a wild roller coaster ride that I'm just just so thankful and appreciative of every day that I get to play in that space. You know, it's different every day. Anyway, that that's where I'm at um, professionally, personal side. Man, I've got uh, I got three kids. My daughter just turned 18 today. I can't believe it. Yeah, um, still a lot going on. Yeah, it's a big milestone. <laughs> it is. Um, so we're going to talk about a people first approach to an ERP implementation. Um, you just led through, or, or I think, I believe you're still going through the ERP implementation. Yeah. So this is a fresh story to tell. Um, you know, oftentimes in our space, sitting in change management, we're, we're told, hey, we're going to support this ERP implementation. Do you need any help? You know, we need you to support your, submit your resource requests by X, yeah. right? So, yeah. so my question to you, Jason, you know, how do you justify change management resources on it on an erp implementation yeah that's it's, it's it's man that's a great question um how do you set up that erp team and so two, two disclaimers first off right so i've got a couple notches on my belt now around these erp implementations but you and i both know there's gurus out there yeah. friends with some yeah. other man and I, I tell you what i was intimidated going into it like i didn't know what i didn't know yeah um to be yeah. honest with you um, and so I just say that to encourage some of you folks that find yourselves in similar shoes, like there's resources out there, reach out to your network, you can do it like it, but ERP is like kind of a big thing, you know, it is, it is, um, it is. and, um, I don't know, I've already forgotten what my second point was, but like, that's my big message. I'm not a guru, but I've got a little bit of experience. So for those of you that are new, this might register pretty well. Um, but to me with ERPs, P is. What we're doing is we're putting a system in, right, that communicates data information across this, across different functions. And those functions are a fill of people, obviously. And usually the way organizations are structured, those functions are aligned differently, right? So you're, you're trying to shove this data that goes all across here. And if you think about it as a language, which it kind of is, you've got to speak the same language across all those things. This is very people stuff. Yeah, it's a system. But man, people are at the core of this thing. Um, and what ERPs yeah. force companies, these companies to do typically, my experience was, you have, to, you have to start aligning processes. You can't just put in a new system and you use a couple different clicks and you access it differently, your login's different, whatever. Like you gotta change your process. You're changing how information flows. Your inputs are changing, your outputs are changing. You know your customers a little bit more. And you mess, as, a, as an individual, as, if you think of it in terms of adoption, if you mess something up at the front end of that flow of, of that communication or that information, that data, and you're, you're messing people up all the way down the line. So you've got to do your due diligence 
And that's about bringing people together. Um, mm -hmm. Man, there's no doubt about it. These ERP things are big technology. They're expensive. They're really cool in what they're capable of doing. But without the people, it just it doesn't happen. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah, yeah. With, with, um, with your most recent implementation, um, was, was the program leadership supportive of change management? Was it? Yeah. There's two types of organizations. There's some where it's like, what? Why do we need it? Right, because they're, they're they're focused on the technology, and there's others like, oh, yeah. the people side is more important than the technology themselves, right? You, you, they, so they exist on a spectrum. Um, yeah. So with 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 the organization that you're working with, you know, um, how was the uh, perception of change management? Yeah, man, and this is why you're so good at this. That was the second part I was going to forget to say. Any stories that I tell today that have to do with impacting people in a positive way, it's not what I did. It's honestly change management was baked into this project the entire time. Awesome. Um, the leadership uh, um, needed some education and understanding of how OCM got engaged in, in these large technical projects. And um, quite honestly, I, I threw a budget number at them that I thought they would shoot down. Um, and then in, in, instead we had a conversation and we talked it through and I'm not, I, I, we got, uh, I was very impressed with the amount of resources given to the OCM team to make this happen. Um, so, the ground was fertile, I would say. I think they're open to the idea. Um, it, it took a good dialogue and it took being able to point back, you know, to certain areas of where, uh, where was OCM going to add value, right? And it was in that process identification, um, adjusting people to get the right people talking, um, and the training that's involved. And, you know, in, in our particular case, you know, pretty typical, we're putting four or five modules in, we're putting it in in five or six different countries, seven or eight different manufacturing sites. Uh, one site was using an old version. One site, honestly, part of our training plan is we had to deliver computer basics training, right? Keyboard use, mouse use, you know, how to use a mouse, right? So we had a long journey to go, and it was a diverse journey. We really had to have a customized approach. So wow. great team. Wow. Couldn't be proud of our leadership team and how they invested in people. And that was the story on down the line for the, yeah. throughout the yeah. 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 You know, um, Jason, as you, were, as you were speaking, I was thinking about this. Um, after the kickoff meeting, you know, mm -hmm. how much culture work did you and a team invest on top of the traditional change work? So usually, let's say you're, you're implementing technology, you have your kickoff meeting, and a lot of times it's just the project team meeting, right? Design phase, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And you, you really don't start engaging the stakeholders until you really have a, a real solution for the, uh, you know, for the end users. What, was there any uh, mindset work or any leadership development going on with select members of the business um, before you guys baked out a, a full solution? Just wondering, just. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so here's where I feel very fortunate. Um, and again, I'm new to these ERPs, so maybe this is more standard practice than I realized, but this was a new experience for me and it showed, to me showed the investment in the people. Yeah. So yeah. way back before we started building the solution, um, you know, pretty traditional to have a design validation, right? And that to your point, it's usually a core project team. We want to make quick decisions. You know, we want to get moving. We've got, you know, external resources that's, you know, has a daily burn on cash, right? We got to get moving. Um, Brian, man, we flew in from all over the world, over 125 people to go through design validation workshops and wow. hear from the business to say, does this work? Where doesn't it work? Right. And so what was really cool culturally, what we did at the very beginning, this was the very beginning, right? There's some project work up front, but this is where our, truly where our kickoff happened. It wasn't just like a celebration and a conference call. Like we brought people in. Poland, UK, I mean, South Africa, poor people. It was in the middle of January in Chicago, right? And we got people from Brazil coming in. I mean, it was, just, we should have gone somewhere else. But anyway, yeah. um, we brought, so we did these workshops, right? And we put similar functions together, all these different manufacturing plants. There, this was a very, air, uh, very customized area of our business. So what one plant was doing was a little different than another plant. It wasn't standardized. So we brought these plant managers together and, and procurement people together from all over the world to think about their work stream. And Tammy, on, on one of your sessions not too long ago, talked about that horizontal work stream when you're working, when you're setting up your ERP team, right? Yeah. So we threw that in there that way. We had business subject matter experts or SMEs. We had bis global business leads that oversaw those processes in those workshops. And then we had technical leads there too, listening to requirements and stories and getting all that documented. 
Um, and then here's the other indication of investment in OCM side. Again, you know, we've got a lot of resources going into this. Time is short. Um, they gave uh, me as the global OCM lead chance to, to do some cool people cultural activities. And so we shook those teams up again and we, we reorganized them regionally and geographically. And we had different conversations. We split them up by roles. And we really said, okay, what's this going to mean to your team? What do we have to do differently when you go back? So my change management team really had a good understanding walking out of that session. So our technical people walked out, they knew the requirements, they understand what was happening from an OCM side from day one. We knew how we were going to have to approach Brazil differently than we were approaching, you know, our, our whale, our plant in Wales and, you know, North of London. So we did a lot of work and it informed us and made us better, um, you know, servants of, of our end users throughout the rest of that project. Again, investment in those people was incredible. That's awesome. That's awesome. So that sounds like you, uh, uh, you and the team facilitated some really, really strong engagement at the very beginning. How did you, how, what activities happened throughout the implementation mm -hmm. to sustain that, that engagement? Yeah, Especially you know, I think, global, especially when you're working with global stakeholders. Yeah, global was, was interesting. So, you know, I think we followed a lot of the traditional, um, what would you call them, rituals of a, of a technical project delivery, right? So you've got that design validation I just described, and then you come back together as a, as a group and do a build validation, right? You take a look at what's been built, does it work, does it not work? Um, you know, that's a big ritual and then gets further development, and then you do user acceptance testing, right? Another area um, that's usually a very technical focused ritual, streamline who's participating so you can get through it, because usually your launch is right after UAT, um, or user acceptance testing. Um, again, we man, we really we really did this thing right. So build validation now came in a year after our our design validation happened. So we went away and built. We um, we really did a lot of data cleansing up front. And anyone that's done ERP knows how important that data cleansing component is. Mm -hmm. So we actually structured this to do a lot of data cleansing first. Anyway, we brought people back in again January in Chicago. We brought people back like we were just mean to these people. I don't know why we did that. But we did a build validation, brought similar people back, and it adjusted over the course of the year. They got their hands in it. They got to see the system. They got their direct feedback right back to the people building the system. Um, but again, it was bringing people together face to face. And you know what happens in between those meetings, those hallway conversations, those dinners you have at night. Man, relationships were built, and those became the foundation because it was only going to get harder from there. And we didn't know it, right? So COVID was coming. We didn't know it in January of 19. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we went away and we built it and we made a decision again, we were kind of tossing up in the air, how much, how many people were going to bring, bring to UAT, to user acceptance testing. We decided to make the investment, we, we, we decided as a principle, it was people first in this ERP implementation. We flew to finally to Poland now, and now it's March, and we did user acceptance testing. Again, hats off to my technology team that they understood how important the change management aspect of it was because they threw time back to us when it was very important to get those tests done so we could capture that and get the system ready to launch. Um, we ran some OCM workshops in there, getting feedback, testing things out, mapping out processes, identifying gaps in just what we understood of the business processes that needed to adapt at that point. Yeah. So again, you know, um, very traditional things, but really done in a way that put the people at the heart of it, um, that really made the difference in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. And then COVID happened, right? <laughs> and then the world went virtual. So yeah, I talk to us about how how did that go down? Like how did <laughs> everyone's yeah. been flying to Chicago and then all of a sudden, you know, there's no more flights. So so honestly, so we were in Poland in mid to late uh, it was about mid February. And it was just really starting to make headlines. Um, and as we were flying home, it was starting to make the uh, headlines in Italy, right? So it was really, business was just kind of waking up in North America, to what was going on and really kind of over the world. Um, but we really took very proactive measures. Um, we were about to have um, another gathering that was gonna require people to fly together for a very intense training around um, the, the um, the financial module right so there's a lot there's a lot that goes into that financial model is very complex um, and it's really at the end of the whip of, of that whole data flow so anything's wrong with it man it, it shows up there mm -hmm. we're about to fly people in um, and no there was no restrictions in any country at this point and we made a decision as a project that it was we were 
sticking to our principle people first we're going to save we're going to protect those those important assets which are the people um and we figured out we're going to run this training virtual we're going to figure it out um and if it's not perfect we're going to be pretty agile and just keep at it until we get it right mm -hmm. so that was the first thing that we did um, the second thing we did is our company started to roll out very quickly teams. So we've been evaluating teams, but we weren't ready. Um, but man, we, we dumped that thing out and just got going after it. And we were able to um, work with that project team and get some early access to teams and some teams training um, to some of our key decision makers and key contributors across the project and yeah. started meeting like this face to face, right? And um, man, that's where that early investment in the people and those relationships got us through the rocky parts, you know. We're at the in, most intense part of a project where the timeline's getting short, the cast is getting short. We got to get this thing out the door. Um, and you can't have, you know, people ignoring emails for three days because they just, you know, the relationship has been burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, so that that laid the, the groundwork. And then, um, and I don't want to belabor the point, but the other thing going again, back to the project leadership, that really had OCM at the front of their mind the whole time. We took an honest and sincere look at our timeline and we juggled our goal lives. So we decided to split up which plants we launched first. Yeah. We brought yeah. our North America plant forward because they were SAP experienced. Um, so it changed our strategy a bit. And we also knew in uncertain times, it was unlikely that we were gonna get to deliver this face-to-face -face, uh, post goal live support. We call it hyper care, you know. Um, we wanted to do that face-to-face -to, -face to ensure there was no disruption to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, but what we did there is we decided, you know, let's rearrange. Um, and so we, we, we actually strung out our project timeline a little bit more. We, we absorbed the cash or we went to our executive steering committee. Tammy talked about those, um, you know, how to structure an ERP team. That was one of those. And they said, yeah, yeah, you need to do this. We want you to do it right. And if you tell us, it, it, you know, we need to change our timeline, we need to figure out how to do this stuff and do this support virtually and do it well, do what you got to do. Um, it was really, I'm telling this story and I tell you, I've been on projects that didn't go this way and the outcomes were much different. And we're, we're like you said, we're about halfway through this implementation and um, so far it's best, uh, best in show for, for delivering an ERP in, in this organization right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. So, um, so Jason, um, I want to move to con concluding this conversation, but what's yeah. one thing that you would recommend to an OCM practitioner who is supporting their first ERP implementation? Or maybe yeah. supporting their third, but what would you recommend? What's the one thing that they have to have to know? Man, I tell you what, for, for me, it's that business process, right? So a lot of a lot of the energy is going towards the build and design of the technology. When it comes down to it, your technology needs to support your business processes. Mm -hmm. And so um, in, in this particular case, we had a very customized business that was built through acquisition rather than built up through the organization. So the ways of working were really different mm -hmm. and you cannot start early enough on understanding what those processes are, making those processes visual so everyone can see it and agree to it. There's a difference, right? You just hear someone talk through it. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah. that all makes sense. We're good. But once you see it on paper and you start to look for yourself and your peer over here, it's like, oh no, this isn't going to work. We got to figure out how to do this. Um, and so I think you can't underestimate that. And then I'll go back to something that Tammy said as well. I know you only gave me one thing, but setting up your team for success, man, that she is spot on. She was telling the truth on that. Yeah. Set it up, get it done before you bring in your integration partners. Um, and we, we really set it up, really, again, focused on the people. We had a, a technology lead, a business subject matter expert, and a site lead, so someone that knew the business and the processes, all teamed together for every site. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that, but organize your team and OCM team. If it's you doing process mapping, or if it's if you've got another department that does it, man, go get them, pull them into your project team and get those processes mapped out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jason, man, you are the best. Thank you for all your support with Change Nerd. Thank you for taking time to have this conversation with me. Um, so for, for viewers who want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm out there on LinkedIn. You know, you can find me on LinkedIn and um, that's probably the best place. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Jason. Thank you so much, man. Take care. Yeah, bet, Brian. Thank you. Nice talking with you.